After 10 years of playing in multiple different bands throughout New York, a lot of it focusing on my um, group where I co that I co-lead called Gut Bucket, and spending a lot of time composing for multiple ensembles from American Composers Orchestra to Bang on a Can to um, bass clarinet duos to string quartet, you name it. Uh, I've decided to try to put all of these influences into one pot which I'm calling Slow Fast. The music is very heavily composed and that was a big part of the why on this project. To try to really take the same structure of many of my more heavily composed works and try to bring in sounds of improvisation and performers who play a lot of jazz um, into this one concept, which I'm calling 21st century third stream. The idea being it's taking some contemporary classical influences, it's taking some rock influences, and it's all bringing it into an improvisational context. I'm really excited to be joined by some fantastic musicians on this project. Russ Johnson is playing with me, he's playing trumpet. I first heard about Russ in 2001 when we both released records at the same time on Knitting Factory Records towards the end of that era. I was, uh, this was the first record for me and my group Gut Bucket and it was I believe the second other quartet record which is a uh, fabulous group that he was involved in for quite some time at that, at that point. Got to know his trumpet playing and kind of put that in the, the back of my head, thinking, okay, maybe maybe someday. And eight years later, I called him up and said, hey, do you want to do this project? His playing on this, there's some trumpet parts that are nearly impossible, I was told, and he just nails all of them. And he um, impressed not only me, but everyone else in the band with uh, just his, his strength as a performer and a beautiful improviser as well. Near Felder, I met through Fred Kennedy. We were looking for a guitarist who could play some very difficult music that required a lot of chops, and also someone who could bring his own thing to the project, and I think Near really was the guy for this. Uh, he, um, you can hear right at the beginning of the record him doing some really beautiful ambient chords behind the melodies. Um, and then on the second track, he's in a totally different realm, he's playing distorted, and he takes an incredible two-minute solo in the middle of that track as well. So his playing really also brought a lot to what was going on. I met Adam Armstrong many years ago. It's funny how New York works. I, I met him on a kids' band gig, uh, a band for kids, um, and he. We were just having fun. He was playing one, four, and five and I was playing clarinet, and somehow I, I, you can just generally tell how people play, no matter what they're playing, and his playing, it just seemed like he had a lot more that he could do, and in fact, he can. Uh, he brought a lot to this record in his um, intonation, his time, his feel, um, and just some beautiful solo work as well. And you know, most of the bass parts are written out, but there's a lot of times when I just ask him to just, you know, play chord changes and he just does a beautiful job. Fred Kennedy I met uh, playing in a band together. We play in Jody Redditch's Fire in July together, which is a chamber singer-songwriter uh, group. And uh, his playing in that is totally different from his playing in Slow Fast, but he struck me as a very versatile drummer. And he also is one of those drummers who, when you hand him a chart. He wants to see the whole score. He doesn't want to just see a drum part or just see a bass part. He wants to see everything that's going on. And once he sees everything that's going on, gets an idea of the drum part that I'm looking for, he creates kind of his synthesis of that, um, which is just incredible and brought so much to, to this record.
The album begins with the piece Clan of Helmet. It was the first piece that I'd written for the band. And I was experimenting with a little bit of patience. And uh, the structure of this tune is similar to maybe a, a beginning of a raga um, in that there's a few, there's a number of chords, and what we do is we explore those chords for a little while before we um, go into an improvisational section based on those chords. Uh, of course, the exploration is fairly written down. Uh, the uh, trumpet and bass clarinet play in unison uh, some floating lines on top of some chords that are grounded by the, the bass and guitar. Uh, this leads into a trumpet solo that's actually the only trumpet solo on the whole record, and then uh, finishes uh, kind of in, a, in an arc, in a downwards arc. The next piece people ask me a lot about, largely because of the title, which is God Damn You Ice Cream Truck. And of course, every, the first question that everyone wants to know is, is the uh, Mr. Softy ice cream truck theme in here somehow? And the answer is no, not at all. And it was titled uh, purely out of frustration, being in New York in a hot summer, trying to uh, get ideas from my head to my paper. And in the meantime, being interrupted <laughs> <laughs> in terms of the train of thought by the ice cream truck, which was um, intensely annoying and I thought deserved the, uh, the song time. Uh, this is maybe the hardest piece on the, on the, on the record. Um, it's long, it's fast, it's tricky. The, um, the, the melody lines and the rhythm lines don't always obviously meet up together. Um, and this is when I realized just how good my bandmates were, that everyone just seemed to be eating it up with no problem. There was an incredible moment in the studio, which you'll hear on the record. Uh, about six minutes into the tune, there's a two-minute solo guitar feature. That um, basically the instruction is just take everything from the first six minutes and just you know really go with it. And, and Nier really went with it. He just there's an incredible solo uh, that leads back to another build-up to uh, to kind of a climactic end. No, No, No um, was a tune where I, I took that patience that I was talking about in Planet Helmet and really pushed it further. And what I wanted to do is to try to see what an eight minute build would feel like from basically fairly simple materials. There's no drum part on this. Basically, Fred improvises through the entire thing. Uh, but the four of us are playing just soft chords and stepwise motion that build more and more towards uh, towards a uh, climax about you know seven minutes or so through the song. Um, it's it's a blow. It takes a lot of lips to play through this whole piece, um, but it was something that is more patient than something I've written before, and um, really is the kind of thing that I was trying to get to with this project. Something that is really composed, that is long, that is patient, that is not worried about, okay, when's the solo, when's the groove going to come in, but actually uh, treating it like a, like a composition. Wander Angst is the only piece on the record that does not have a solo on it. Originally I had written a solo for Wander Angst, uh, but decided to cut it, and that was a lot of what I was trying to do with this record is to only use improvisation and only use solo moments when I felt that they were absolutely necessary. And in Wanderings, we played through it a couple times and I thought, you know, there's no reason for a solo here. This doesn't need a solo. And so it's a written tune the whole way down. There's an additional element of Blockenspiel on Wanderings, uh, which um, which is something that Fred plays live and actually turns around and plays his Glock, um, keeps going, plays the kit for a while, and then returns to the Glock and then to the kit. And the, the Glockenspiel, I feel, offers a moment of different orchestration and a little bit of a respite from the intensity of the, of the piece. The last piece on the record, It Would Be Easier If, uh, is something that surprised me a little bit in terms of how it ended. It ends in a little bit of kind of an epic 
rock kind of way. And it's not something that I expected when I started writing the piece. And when I started writing it, I was interested in the trumpet and guitar duet that happens at the beginning, how the bass and the um, and the bass clarinet actually start to interrupt that a little bit and where things go from there. And I also wanted to make sure to uh, leave a feature for bassist Adam Armstrong in there, who has a beautiful solo on this piece as well. But the ending was a little bit of a surprise to me. It ends big, and I think that that it, it turned out to work really well, I think, for the end of the, of the record as well. I'm really excited about It Would Be Easier If being released uh, in the United States in November. Uh, we were we released uh, in September in Germany on Intuition Records and now they're, they're bringing it around the world and it's going to be released here. I'm very excited about it. It's something that I feel... I didn't know quite how to place it. I didn't know whether to call it jazz. I didn't know whether to call it modern composition. Um, definitely I'm still questioning what this record is, but um, I hope you get a chance to listen to it and to 